All right. I was a little scared. I'm always scared when we bring in Mega Random. Scared in a good way, right? But you don't know what type of generation you're going to get. And I was just saying that sometimes we get generations which are not no so exciting. But we do have an exciting generation here. Uh, well, I guess we'll talk more about the map after we do the introduction for the players. But at least at first glance and look at the mini map, we've got a pretty good one. As always, for our community-style games, eight players, eight kings. And as we've been doing pretty much all the time now, the kings explode which adds some extra spiciness to the games. So, in the red, we've got Bobster playing as the Tatars. In the uh, teal, we have Boxer Saint playing as the Bulgarians. Uh, in the green, oops. <laughs> uh, in the green, we have Pick Random or I Pick Gots, which is interesting. Uh, <laughs> must play some ranked games uh, playing as the Malay. In the purple, oh my god, dude. You gotta be so careful with your king. In the purple, we have Fenira playing as the Turks. In the orange, we've got Guapo as the Franks. In the yellow, we have Black Fury playing as the Bohemians. And then uh, in, in the gray, I'm going to skip over one guy. We've got Bad Speller uh, playing as the Malians. And then last but not least, the reason I saved him for last, actually, is because it's Snippy, one of the original legends of community games. He's been around the community for like seven, eight years now, and he's killed a lot of kings. Only the last time we saw him, which was a month or two ago, he actually played standard, and he went for economy, and he didn't try and kill people right away. Normal Snippy, the Snippy that we've grown to know and love, loves his castle starts because he'll make the tards, and then he'll, regardless of his civilization, uh, go for archers or cav archers to petard down TCs or castles, and then kill kings. So we will see if Snippy uh, wants to be aggressive, or if Snippy maybe is trying to redefine himself here. I don't know. But anyways, back to the map here. It looks like they kind of start up on a hill. At the bottom of the hill, there's lots of stone uh, and only two tiles of gold in the middle. And then up on the hill, they've got quite a few resources. Yeah, everyone's got tons of gold to go to and then all their wood. But I could definitely see this game running out of wood pretty quickly if you really think about it. Look, there's not like there's a ton of trees towards the corners, but I mean, that would still be a pretty long game. So, you know, let's say Snippy wants to play standard here, and he just wants to, again, redefine himself. That's a tricky thing to do. He already has a reputation. People are not going to trust Snippy, right? <laughs> like you might get one person to trust him, but you know, the weakness of Snippy, which I think we saw in that game, for those that maybe missed it, I'll explain, is that he, he doesn't chat all that much. So I think Snippy trying to redefine himself at this stage of his career, if you could call it, that would be a little bit tricky. All right, so what, what are we seeing? A boxer said, I'm going to drush. Bad Speller didn't change his mod, so he's got massive trees. Um, and Boxer Saint just wants to know what everyone's elo is right now. And Bobster says unranked. I know Snippy's 1,200. I did actually cast him play a ranked game uh, like two months ago. We were doing low elo legends, but then I saw that Snippy was playing at around 1,200 elo. And he kind of threw... <laughs> He played really well. He kind of threw. He ended up losing the game. And uh, I I looked to my Discord later, and there was there's a mod chat. He's one of the moderators of my channel. And he just said, T90, you're evil. <laughs> so I have a feeling someone messaged him and brought up the fact that I casted his game. And I'm sure he's loving the fact that I'm bringing it up again. But it's okay. I mean, we all lose games. I don't really know everyone else's elo, but I think Bad Speller would be above 1,200. This is the only other player in this game that really has played quite a few times. Um, I don't think he's been around as long as Snippy, but I I've re I forget what his username is. It's not... Actually, it is Bad Speller. Maybe I don't even know what I'm talking about, but I do recall him being around in games before. All right. Glad you like the pick. It is a dead manga die. Yeah, it's what I thought it was. It actually made it funnier that I couldn't really see it, so... It is diplomacy. Uh, they have all allied each other, as you can see with the indicators on the right side. So there's no issues there. Uh, we haven't really seen any real person-to-person -person chat just yet, but these guys are probably going to wait until they're on the way to Castle Age to do that. So we have time to relax and chill. Kind of reminds me of a tweet I got from someone last night. It was just like, call me weird, but I just love to get home after a long day of work and watch T90 officials, what he said. And I responded to him and I said, you're weird, but we can be weird together. So that's all cool. 
Um, it is interesting with Age of Empires. Like, this game is extremely stressful to play, but there's just something about it which is so relaxing to watch. <laughs> and I don't know if there's like a... I don't know if there's a better example of that in my life. Like, think of sports, for example, right? Like, the sports that are the most intense physically, they're not the most relaxing, right? Like, um... The most relaxing sport for me to watch would be like golf or baseball. Not that I watch either of those a lot, but if I were to, I could take a nap to that, right? But it's not, you know, as physically demanding. I don't know why Age of Empires 2 of all things is just like so peaceful. I, I think it might be the slow buildup and how it works, but I, I don't know. I guess it's really hard to know how fast everyone's moving when you're watching this, which might not be the case with other games. I don't know. It's about 9 a.m. for me right now. Well, Lolmeister, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Um, T9, do you remember the Pilgrim Nothing game where you played and someone sacrificed their king to kill you within the first five minutes? Bad Speller was in that. He was in that or he was the one who killed me? I don't actually remember the one who killed me. <laughs> but I do remember that, sadly. Hmm. I nap watching Tour de France. Dude, I used to watch it a lot. Like, back in Lance Armstrong's prime, that was big in my household. I can't say I've watched much of it since. So, my dad, uh, he likes to ride a road bike. And he used to live in France. So, you can imagine that when the Tour de France, com Tour de France excuse me, comes around, he likes to watch it. Uh, he still watches it to this day. Every single year. Um, but especially back then when it was on in my house... I used to watch a fair amount of it. And Bobster says, Hey, Teal, I'm next to you. Team. All right, that makes sense. We'll see if Teal responds to that. I see you. Ooh. Okay, but says this to everyone. Ooh, suddenly the romance spreads. <laughs> I like <laughs> the two different types of Diplo. Hey, man, I'm next to you. Do you want to be friends? Otherwise, like, you know, kind of compliments him. Gray goes, these are the experienced old-time community gamers. He just goes, hey, Snippy, please don't snipe me. <laughs> That's Diplo. <laughs> just straight and to the point. All right, now Snippy hasn't added the barracks yet. Oh, wait, there's the barracks. Okay, this is going to be the classic Snippy, right? Because I don't think you would see a barracks if we were going to see multiple TCs. I think this will be a barracks into an archer range and then cav archers from Snippy. So, I guess it was a good thing for Gray to ask, Snippy. Snippy's fast castle time is really solid here. He will be the fastest one to castle. Um, If you liked Lance, gotta watch Icarus on Netflix. Okay, is it, it documentary or something? Or I mean, it was just it was just a crazy time. You know, um, it was it was cool to watch some of the... I mean, say what you want, obviously, about the controversies and all that. I don't want to get into that. But the reality is, um, the things that were accomplished were, were pretty insane. And it was fun to watch at the time. So I have pretty vivid memories of that. Only to you, we are neighbors, want to stick together. Now, this is, this is what we call good multitasking here for Guapo. Because it's one message to two people. This is the way to do it. And now purple says, yeah, let's do it. And then you got to hope that yellow is obviously going to respond as well. But that saves you from going, hey, yellow or hey, purple and having to type out two different messages. I like that. Also, you got to love how Snippy didn't respond at all. He didn't say a word when Gray said, please don't snipe me. And now Gray says, hey, Bobster, let's watch out for Snippy. He's near us. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. This is this is why Snippy these days is fun in these games, because you always know something's up. And yup, there's the Cav Archers. Red and green, whatever these guys throw at us, we have to stand together. And then Bobster says, agreed, we should take him out. Responding to Gray, talking about Snippy. Well, you guys are dropping town centers. He's going to make Cav Archers and Petards. So good luck with that. He's already on his fifth Petard. The sixth one's going to be on the way after that. Um, It's a documentary about doping and racing. Oh, gotcha. 
Well, I don't know if that's going to be a high up on my list of things to watch. But I might get into it at some point. I do like a documentary every now and then. But it's like, it's not something I really plan for. I don't know how to describe it. I'd just be like, ooh, a five episode documentary? Let's do it. All right, so Snippy's building up. He hasn't chatted to anyone. Let's talk about his easiest targets. I think yellow and gray are the two obvious ones. The good news for yellow and gray is that their castles are actually on the opposite side of Snippy's base. So they will have more time to react and see that Snippy's coming in. Mm. Snippy's not worried about trying to defend himself here. He's not trying to tell anyone anything. He's simply playing his game. And he wants to kill people. And if he were to kill someone like Green, that's close enough where that explosion could actually then kill Purple. Oh, it's the same with Yellow and Orange. Might even be the same with Gray and Red. A bad Speller says, yes, let's watch out for Snippy. He's doing Cab Archers. And before anyone says, how does he know it's Cab Archers? He must be stream cheating. It's because Snippy has done this a zillion times and Bad Speller's been around a while. <laughs> I remember when Snippy, um, you know, when he first started to play like this, because this wasn't always how he played, like, the very, the Legend of Snippy video, if you go way back and watch it, he had, like, Arbalest and Trebuchets, and he had to transport them, it was a little bit more inventive, um, but anyways, there are many instances where he didn't have, like, Bodkin Arrow, or he didn't have Ballistics, and he just didn't get enough damage in against the King, so at this point, he kind of has it down to a science where he needs to have Ballistics, Okay, so apparently Snippy had chatted way earlier in the game. I'm looking. Oh, wait. You guys saw Boxer Saint's ELO? He is really good. I don't know what we should do. Okay, so Snippy said that at nine minutes. And uh, I guess Green had suggested... It's really weird how this is like a full sentence for his name. But anyways, Green had suggested maybe you... Snippy sniping him. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Grace is high, Snippy. <laughs> Snippy's not going to respond, man. <laughs> you need eight petards to take out a castle. And Snippy's is just passing. <laughs> oh man, and there goes the kill. Oh, it's a Cabetto. It's a fake. It was so smart. That's not the king. Where is the king, though? Oh no. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, that would have been so epic. Well, he did say please, but it didn't work. And Snippy, as many might have expected, though you never really know these days, especially when everyone's talking about it. Snippy gets a snipe. And Bobster says no. Bobster, this is going to feel a whole lot worse for you in a second because you're going to get some repercussions here. And oh, God. So now you've lost a lot of eco. Bad Speller says, I guess I should play this game more often. I sent a Gabetto out instead of a King. Well, you know, you sent out a Queen, right? She's pretty strong and powerful. I'll be honest, though. I thought that was part of your trick. Like, I thought that was part of the plan. So you probably shouldn't have said anything. It almost worked. Send the Gabetto one way and then send the King another. But yeah, he did say he took a break from the game earlier. And Boxer Saints says, Kings and Castles, boys. And I don't know where Red's going right now, but Snippy doesn't exactly need... Another invitation to kill a king. And does Snippy see that right now? Remember, everyone's allied with Snippy. All he does is look for kings. What are you doing, Red? You have a castle. <laughs> I think he actually might have wanted to send his king towards Snippy because he was upset that his teammate died. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh... Uh, well, Snippy is to go to the menu now and enemy him. <laughs> oh, no! Snippy's still allied with him. It takes a while to be able to get the enemy in. And now he's done it, but he had to stop running for a second. And the king is heading towards Snippy's base. He's <laughs> He says, four gray. <laughs> and he's running in. And Boxer Saint says it as well. Remember gray. And they're trying to get revenge on Snippy.
Now, the thing is, you can't kill it now if you're snippy. And now you run. Now you have to get out of here. But oh my god. Red is a beast. Unranked player. Just isn't having it. He's just sick of the bullying, right? And Snippy's gonna run away with what he can. He will lose all of his town centers, most likely. <laughs> he lost everything. Snippy's playing Nomad now. <laughs> He doesn't have a house. He doesn't have a lumber camp, a castle, monastery. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen this. Literally every single building. And uh, now he's going to drop a new town center and start from scratch. Meanwhile, we have uh, Fenira on the way to Imp. We have Boxer Saint on the way to Imp. And Snippy's down the nine villagers. Now, also, Snippy's been receiving resources from Green. Sorry I didn't talk about this earlier. It was on my list of things to mention. But he's been sending... Like, this isn't the only time he sent resources to Snippy. He was sending a decent amount. So, Snippy drops the heart towards green. And Red says, Glad I didn't lose my king in the middle. Would have been so lame. I mean, you almost did. It's just the fact that Snippy had to go to the menu and then find you and enemy you. And in that time, he wasn't able to click with his units. That and the Kings being faster than the Cav Archers is really helpful there. Well, props to you, Bobster. Yeah, I mean, that uh, it makes more sense what you were doing out there now. I wasn't entirely sure what you were doing. But now it all makes sense. So Green's got to be careful. Uh, I don't know if you guys just spotted it, but that is a King there. And if you are uh, making units out of your castle, sometimes you'll accidentally send your units forward. And if he wants to attack with this stuff, he could send it into someone's base. Cute little circular base here for Fenira. Uh, I haven't been looking at a lot of different players' ecos just because of Snippy's existence. So we've got knights over here. Oh god, and yellow's now turned on Snippy. So no one wants to be next on Snippy's hit list. And I don't blame them. It's going to be really difficult for Snippy to be able to build up and kill people if they don't give him time. And I don't think there's any real reason to give them time. So these wagons, they don't actually take like any damage from TCs. I think it's one damage a hit. Well, especially when there's only two villagers in there, but they're just going to sit on that TC. Yellow's got 66 villagers. Snippy's got like 12. So I think Snippy will have big problems here. And he actually could lose his king. Ooh, this gets interesting. I think Snippy... We'll lose this town center, guys. He doesn't have any way to stop the CC from going down. It'll take a really long time because he's Persians. But he's already lost 400 HP. Oh, yellow, dude. You've got to you've gotta be careful, though. Because look at Snippy. He's now has found the castle. So you know what he's thinking. He's probably thinking he needs to get this king over there. Uh, Green says, I think someone talks behind my back. No chat. I think people are just very distracted right now. And let's see if Snippy can get another snipe. And Sn Snippy just says it. He says, yellow stop or I... Your base. Let's see what yellow does. Because, like, how much faith does yellow have that he's going to hit the shots? These Hussite wagons, they miss a lot of shots. Snippy's distracting with the Vils. Nice. You could sell. Like, they're not going to kill the king. And look at that. There goes the king. And the king is going to survive. The king's going to make it over to yellow's base. Unless yellow can get units right here or right here or something. Oh, God, yellow. Oh, no. You should have gone for archers, man. <laughs> I don't know if he has ballistics. But maybe his TC fire could hit it. Because Snippy doesn't know about the TC. The good news for you, Yellow, is you could probably run with your king now. So you probably won't die. But this will still really hurt you. <laughs> Meanwhile, Green is still sending resources to Snippy. Which is the last place you should be sending your resources right now. And Snippy sends it back. <laughs> no! No, he might actually die now. He dies. <laughs> I respect that from Snippy, though. He, he appreciates it enough from Green where he sends the resources back. Yellow, you do realize that this king explodes, right? 
Hello? I really hope you survive this, but you almost don't deserve to. Oh, no. Oh, God. The boxer did say, I think yellow just killed himself. And now this could kill orange as well. This could just go around in a circle until one person's left and wins. Is orange going to die as well now? Top score? Oh, he somehow survived! What? The castle went down, but the king, thankfully, was garrisoned the other way. Holy crap. And orange kind of knew something was up there, too. Wow, well, that could have been way worse for orange there. So, okay. So now we've got four people left 35 minutes into this game. Earlier, we had a game where everyone was alive 90 minutes in. So this has been very fast. You can thank Snippy for that. Sn Snippy, my favorite move from you this game, though, was stopping to send the resources back to green before you died. <laughs> that was so good. That was so good. Okay, stacking army in the mid says green. Green's having a good time. You could just tell. Sending resources to Snippy, trying to chat to people, talking about a cozy castle. The Boxer Saint says orange is the one we kill. Um, I wonder, like, if purple and orange have a strong alliance right now. I haven't seen a ton of chatter. I mean, Paladin and Cav Archers against Malay Elephants and... Ooh, Conix. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Teal. 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 Your king's in here. Bro. Unless this is part of the plan and the king is just so bold to lead his men into the army or into the battle. I think you need to take a second look at this. This is why players will put their kings inside of towers. And he says, let's move. Oh, God. Oh, he noticed. <laughs> he noticed. Thank God. <laughs> if that was like champions and the king, I don't think he would realize. But because the king looks very different from the conic. We picked up on it. And he says, sorry, T90, I saw it. He knows I was talking about it. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, how many times have we seen it, right? My favorite one actually happened a couple months ago. It was Teutonic Knights, and it was a king. All right, so they're making a move against Orange, who just narrowly avoided death and is two minutes away from Paladin. But Elite Conic should beat the Cavalier. It's a really strong unit. You don't see it every day. Not to mention there's elephants as well. So we have the town bell. They're going for the king. They're not attacking the units, which gives Orange a chance. Because his uh, his units are actually getting some decent kills right now. There's also a TC to garrison in as well. So if you're Orange, you need to set your rally point on the TC. And make sure your TC's not full with villagers. I think that's what would happen here. Because that TC is 15 villagers. Purple is also not helping at all. Uh, purple doesn't seem to really care. Or at least isn't able to react in time. And if you think about it, there's four people left. Um, three others, I guess, if, if you're looking at it from Purple's perspective. And the other three are all losing resources and units. So it might just be better for you to sit back and chill and save as many resources as possible. King is now ejected. And the king is going to die here. It was a good attempt from Guapo, but the king goes down. And Purple's king is inside of this TC. Okay, I'm trying to get a gauge for this. I actually think Purple survives. It's going to be very similar to what happened earlier with Orange. But I actually think the TC will not go down. I think the, the range of it will extend to here. Yeah. I've got a good idea after doing this for so long. So purple lives for now, but we only have three people left. Now, Boxer Saint has been the one kind of, you know, giving out orders to green, but in a nice way. And some players need that, right? Some players need to be told this is what we're doing. This doesn't feel like purple has the military right now. Purple's got nine military. Had some units that just went down in the explosion. And he's just committed towards elite genisseries at the moment. What's the stockpile look like? I mean, the stockpile's there. It just comes down to can Fenira get the archer ranges up in time and get those cab archers out? I just don't feel like it's going to be time because teal and green are just ready. Ooh, look at this. So green probably looked at this and said, hmm, I don't like that. My king is in that castle and your units are standing right next to it. 
So green is now running away. You could maybe be sneaky and try and garrison in red's castle. Red is dead, but you can garrison in an ally's castle. The way I was expecting this game to go is you have teal and green kill purple, and then teal just kills green, and then boxer wins. What is happening? Is he going to do this in the spirit of Snippy? <laughs> Wait, maybe the safest place for your king is actually in your opponent, in your ally's base. Is he going to jump in this castle? Is he going to gift purple the win? Now, it's not safe when it's a 1v1 because you can't explode in someone's base if it's a 1v1. When the king's dead, it's dead. And then the other person wins. But he's hiding it next to his castle. So it's not in the castle. He's just right behind it. Yeah, sure. That's safe, bro. Now, we don't know if Boxer was actually intending on killing the king that was in this castle because this is where they had met before. <laughs> the balls, man. <laughs> I would at least go in the castle, though, because if he has murder holes, you're going to lose that king. But it's like it's a little bit of an insurance policy, honestly. But it's a bit of a it's a weird double edged sword because Teal is never going to turn on you unless he sees your king. Huh. OK. All right. But this is given purple time to mass cav archers and Turk cav archers are really good. But I'm still not seeing like a big ball of units. And Conic and Elephant just so much HP. You really would need, I think the ideal Turk composition is you have the gunpowder or the cav archers in range. And then you have hussars or camels in front. Because you're you're fighting 1v2, right? So you just need to have bigger army. Malay elephants are very cheap. Sorry, I keep hitting my uh, capture age buttons by accident. 46 army for purple. It's 47 for teal. And teal says, here we go. Now, you know what would have been interesting? Is if after green moved his king from this castle, he put one villager in there to make teal have the temptation to go kill him. Because if teal made the move, it's possible that he would kill green's king here. But then he would die and then I guess purple would win. I don't know. It's a bit of an interesting thing. Because you don't want to incentivize someone to kill you. Okay. Well, Teal's going to drop a castle here. Purple sees that. Isn't happy about it, but such is life. And again, how do you stop this? There's Siege on the way as well. We might have one of the fastest community games in recent memory here. Let's go. It's been eventful. Janisseries is doing a really good job. But the thing about the Conic is when the, the Rider, uh, or I guess like when the main unit dies... Then the rider gets up and also attacks, so it's kind of hard to get rid of these things. And there's a lot of damage being done over time there from Teal. Wait, guys, what happens if Purple sends his king into green... Okay, into Teal's base and kills both of them? Who would die first there? Would Green die first because he was out of the castle? Green's now leaving. So, that again, that was just security. Like, if you try and attack me, I'm going to make sure you die as well definitely feels like purple's a goner because he just doesn't have the fortifications and he's losing all of his base but green knows this is going to be a 1v1 and doesn't want his king there if it's a 1v1 which is what i had said originally while i kind of respect the energy <laughs> he knows it's going to be a 1v1 now though which is why he needs to leave because in you know in a 1v1 scenario the explosions don't happen anymore that king is running really far away as well. Might run directly into Snippy's TC, which would be sneaky. And remember, green really respected Snippy, so it, it only makes sense. Good teamwork here from Boxer and from Pick Random or I Pick Goths. It's slow and steady. Purple really needed a teammate involved. Wasn't there to be able to support Orange. And now Purple is making a run for it. And this is like the second or third time we've seen this. But it seems like Purple realizes that the writing is on the wall and is going to make a run in towards Teal's base. But does Teal see that? What? Did he actually notice that? He actually noticed that. Whoa! He must have been tracking this thing for a while there. Maybe research trees and 
I mean, that king's still going to make it to his base here. So this is not going to kill Teal, but this is going to destroy Teal's chances of winning this game. And Teal's got to run with what he can, but just look at all the things that are around here. You have your production buildings. You have your castles. Uh, will actually affect green as well, to an extent. Just a couple houses, though. And again, thank God that green wasn't here. But there's the explosion, and that damaged both of them. And uh, Boxer Saint says, just you and me, old friends. Green says, yes, was nice with you with a smiley. King is actually in the north of the map. Teal doesn't actually have a castle to research. Oh, no, he does. Okay. I was going to say he doesn't have a castle to research treason. And all right, let's look at stockpiles. Gold count is very low for green, which is not good. Uh, no gold income either. Boxer Saint has more food and he has more gold. What's the army count? Pretty close. Oh my god, the king... Both players have their kings in the corner. <laughs> I like the respect between these two. You don't always see this. Especially after a short game. You know, they haven't built up that many memories together. But nice chatter back and forth. They haven't actually turned on each other yet. And green probably doesn't realize... Well, actually, no, they're still allied, so green would be able to realize how much damage was done here, and finally, we have the turn. So up until that moment, they actually would have been able to see where those kings are located if they looked for it, but it would be pretty hard to find. And what's Teal up to? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Again, they were allied throughout that whole portion. So you would just be looking around, trying to find out where the king is located, and Boxer's going to head right towards it. That's going to be a dead king. And Green knows he's been spotted. Oh, 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 oh. He still has him as ally. He still hasn't turned on him. He still hasn't turned on him. He's going to do the same, the same thing Snippy did. Oh, I think the Conic's just a little bit faster, though. Go, Green. Go, 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 go. <laughs> did he turn on him yet? Teal's actually making a wonder. <laughs> it's a wonder wall. He's quick walling with the wonder. What an epic flex. Nah, I, I don't think green can kill Teal in time. It was really close. But it was good awareness from Teal, and that's going to end the game right there. <laughs> that was a funny one, man. That was funny. Yeah, so, like, let's, let's look back. At what point did they turn? I guess the page up doesn't show it here. Let's go back to, like... Well, okay, purple died, right? So purple's... Purple's dead, the explosion happens. Uh, something that annoys me at the conclusion of these games is this pop-up can't go all the way back up, so sorry if that's annoying you too. So from this point onwards, they're talking as if they're buddies, right? And they are buddies. They were buddies. They're about to turn to each other. So they're now thinking, what's our next plan? And so for Green's perspective, Green can be looking around and could have realized the king is here. Or could realize the castle goes up there. Like, there's like a five-minute period between when purple dies and when they actually enemy each other. And then, <clears throat> in Boxer's position, he, he could maybe notice there's a green dot in the north. And then, there's just were not a lot of places for Teal to hide either. And unfortunately, you just didn't have the siege. God, I actually have to stop running the game because this pop-up bothers me that much. But anyways, um, so it looks like both players have gone to the same spot. The other sad thing, too, is elephants are kind of slow. So while they do have HP, they don't have the speed of the conics there. That was a good game. Favorite part of this game was probably how Gray said, uh, <laughs> he goes, uh, teen, uh, Snippy, sorry, <laughs> please don't snipe me. And, <laughs> and that's exactly what Snippy did. But, you know, yellow, uh, well, no, red got revenge. I forgot about Bobster, actually. Um, Bobster got his revenge for his buddy by sacrificing himself on Snippy. And then yellow, uh, he really made it so Snippy couldn't come back in the game. Unfortunately for him, is when he killed Snippy, he also killed himself. So some embarrassing moments, perhaps. Uh, we had like four kings killed within 25, 30 minutes. And uh, pretty eventful game. 60,000 resources collected for Boxer. Well played. Imagine if Boxer would carry me like he carried this game. <laughs> um, yeah, I am getting triggered by the pop-up, Chuck. You're spot on, man. Um, military count here. What's funny about this 
is I think the the kills that you get as a player can come from the king that exploded. So how many times do you recall Red really attacking anything? I don't recall him scout rushing anybody or fighting with his cab archers. So I think he got 31 kills because he lost his king and then somehow lost a couple more units. Orange obviously took some big fights, but when his king died, he killed a lot of units. And so I guess in theory, if you were to add up, but how would that work? Trying to think if there'd be an imbalance in the KD, but no, I'm I'm just I'm not a math guy. I guess there really wouldn't be. I was kind of equating it to if Gaia kills something. Because if Gaia kills something, there's no kills, but there's a lot of deaths. But I don't know what I was thinking there with the king. Because obviously it incorporates everything. <clears throat> Anyways, GG. Uh, it was a good game. Certainly a bit different than some of the other community games we see that normally go on a lot longer. Uh, sometimes you just got to get aggressive. Good stuff.